You mumble. I can't understand you people. Hello, Hello. and welcome to the final podcast, the last podcast you'll ever listen to. That's right. Your final bros are here. It's Brian Hoppa LaGrasta and Shane Catch Me in Cargo Pants Smith. For sure. Mike G, the cannibal, is on the final podcast I'm with here. the producer, Maddie with the stick. He's yep. here. He's and got that stick. Another episode of this show. Yeah. Stick confirmed. Another app. It's Halloween time, though, folks. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we are doing Hatchet 3. Yeah, super excited. Um, ready for some jacked, unkillable dude in blue overalls? Of course. I, this is the third time now. Won't be the last time. We got one more to talk about after this. But Hatchet 3 is good, but not in the top echelon of the Hatchet movies. Yeah, it's fun, though. Like Says you. <laughs> they're fun movies. Yeah, and that, and that's like the thing with these. They're, they're fun gore fests that like you're just going in to see Victor Crawley rip someone's spine out like he's a Mortal Kombat character. Like that is what we are witnessing here. Is that signal blocked? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's just a giant sword. That is f- fucking Is that large. sharp? Large. Okay. Wow. God, actually, I know where you are, but I'm going to say, can I get you back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to break the I don't want to lean on the wall. That thing is crazy. Shane, give me your best uh, Mortal Kombat and guy. Toasty! What about the other thing? Finish him. Fatality. Yeah, you're not the you're not good at that. That completely, Get over here. That completely was pretty blo- good. It blocked the signal entirely. So now the signal's unblocked. We've talked Mortal Kombat. Let's talk Victor Crowley. Would he be a good Mortal Kombat character? I say yes. Fuck yeah. Who's killing him? No one. Sub? You think Sub would get him? The only thing that can kill Victor Crowley is ashes, <laughs> apparently. I, yeah. <laughs> the ashes of his... Not just any ashes. <laughs> of his father? Yeah. We're talking dad ash. I, how this movie presents the resolution <laughs> is like fucking it's unheard incredible. of. It's incredible. I just... The whole thing is so fucking absurd. We're, we're the one woman who is like... Convinced this is how to kill Victor Crowley. She's like, I believed in you. <laughs> I fucking hated that bitch. She was. I was so happy when she died. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, uh, I think Noob Sabot would destroy this fucker. <laughs> Noob Sabot, so you're going with. <laughs> yeah, like, because, like, Victor, he can't. Well, first of all, he can barely see. Yeah. But then Noob's in the dark all the time. True, so he'll never see him. Yeah. I, I like what, I like what got you're putting it. down. This is a fun movie, and we're fun guys. Yeah. I'm wearing a fucking visor, dude. Yeah, I'm wearing a oh, We're back in visor season. Yeah. Is that, is that October? Yeah, so for, uh, for the first week of October, we're doing Hatchet 3. We did Hatchet 2 last year, and I think Hatchet won all around October yeah, the previous it, three years. So this is nothing new for us. Victor Crowley's The Undertaker, and I'm super excited. <laughs> so if you've never seen our show before, quick rundown. We review horror movies every week. We do the scene-by-scene analysis. We get hit all the gory details, all the kills, walk the movie through, and then give a rating of 1 to 10. Of course, following that, we give you the best kill of the movie. Not always the craziest kill, the most intelligent kill, or the coolest kill, but just the overall, in our opinion, best kill of the film. And that's pretty much it. It's a fun show, and Hatchet 3 is a fun movie. We're we're having fun. We're just four dudes having fun. Yeah. Matt, how are those fingers? Are they loose? They better be loose. Very loose. I might put you to work today. <laughs> okay, okay, I like that. We I treat like our that. producer well. He does a lot of hard work for us, and we treat him well. Yeah, I never disparage him. No, no, we no, would never do that. I would so, never do that. So before we jump into the spooky pit, let's you guys talk like feet. Let's talk <laughs> accents. Let's talk accents because the Louisiana accents in this movie range from like I feel like it's a decent Louisiana accent to wow, I feel like that's a really like. Yeah, it's it's a parody of a Louisiana. It's accent. it's kind of like what this movie series has struggled with since its inception. Yeah. Like Daniel Harris could not figure it out in the second movie. She definitely did better in this movie. Yes, 
But then there's other people where they're like, we're down by the Louisiana swamp. Yeah. There, who was that one guy, the dude that was complaining about trying to leave the entire, I think his name was like Schneidmeyer or something? Sh- Schroederman or Sh- something? Schrodinger? <laughs> Oh, Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> it's it is like it's like Schrodinger's it, cat. That guy's accent is also wild. Yeah, is he the one that had that uh, fucking Schneiderman? Uh, Schneiderman. Yeah. Schneiderman. Who had that rocket launcher? Yeah, yeah that, was that was Schneiderman. Schneiderman. That, was yeah. old, that was old Schneider. He wanted to leave, and he's like, "Wait, before I leave, let me try to take out Victor Crowley with this bazooka." <laughs> that was dope. The beginning of this movie is so fucking wet. It's like I can't take it. All Look the blood. how wet she is, dude. Well, she's covered in nothing but blood. Yeah, like this, really wet blood. This movie <laughs> did explore a concept of Louisiana that we haven't really seen too much of, and that's the bog mud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, there's a really good bog mud kill in this movie. Yeah. It really is. shows you how thick this bog mud is. Yeah. And here's how wet it is. See, I don't like going places or doing stuff. But you get me to the fucking bayou, yes. I'm in. I'm there. I'm down. That's your dream destination, Brian? I want to go there so bad. Yeah. I always yeah. kind of wish we, we would for your batch. Yeah, But, I you know. know. Yeah. It didn't work out. No. Maybe some other time. We will get to Louisiana. Except not in the summer, because I don't want to die. <laughs> I just want to go How during a time where place? we can hunt Victor Crawley. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I want. I don't want to do the whole drunken New Orleans no. thing. I want to no. go in the swamp. Yes. yes. I want to find some crawdads. Okay. I, I like this. Crowley. I, I want to go to the Carcosa. Yes. Find the yellow. Yes. But there's only one way to do that. And that's by jumping into the spooky pit. <laughs> Hated it. <laughs> Hatchet 3, released in 2013. The curse of Victor Crowley is reborn each night. He isn't smashed over the head by his dead father's urn and singed by his ashes. <laughs> this film was directed by BJ McDonald, stars Daniel Harris, the great Kane Hodder, Zane Galligan, Carolyn Williams, Perry Shen once again, Robert Diago Doqui, and Derek Mears. That is Derek Mears. Imagine your name being Kane Hodder. <laughs> it's such a badass name. How cool is that yeah. shit? But like horror icons just have this like like Tony Todd that just has like a good ring to it. Yeah. Like Toby Hooper. <laughs> okay. Like, okay, so um John Carpenter. Yeah, like yeah. Ugh. Wes Craven? Clive Barker. Yeah, they got these like good rings to them. Donald Pleasance. (laughs) Doesn't have the same (laughs) rings. Horror legend Donald Pleasance. (laughs) He is, but it doesn't have that ring. Michael. (laughs) (laughs) Jamie. (laughs) Jamie, you need to kill him. (laughs) You need to kill him, Jamie. All right. Shane, pick your, uh, speaking of badass names, pick your porn name. If you were to join that industry. Uh, probably Donald Driver. Donald Driver. I heard it's supposed to be like the street you grew up on plus your like first pet's name. So for me, it would be uh, Farnham. <laughs> and I've never had a pet. I, 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 <laughs> so I would be Farnham G. I wouldn't call, <laughs> no, oh, that's sick. I wouldn't call him Shane. I think his nickname should be Slain. Ooh, I like it. So you would be Massey. Uh, Steve. Who is Steve? My hamster. He died? <laughs> like years ago. Did you kill him? No, you sicko. I gave him a water barrel. I flushed him down the toilet. Massy Steve? It's almost like massive Steve. That works for porn. Matt, what would your porn name be? Lincoln Shaggy. That's fucking that's like sick. It. That's Oh, that's better than your real name. Oh Brian, my God. What, what about you? Keesler? <laughs> it's the name of the what pet? It's first. your first pet combined with your, yeah. the street you grew up What's on. What's the name Keesler? of the turtle? It's actually, I had a fish. It's called, it's going to be Keesler Octagon. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's the best one. This is sick. This is all You're sick. Keesler Teodosich. Yo, it's not my first pet. Yeah. She's not my, but yeah. I actually did have a fish. I don't remember his name. My, my brother killed it. <laughs> Octagon was one of those like I don't remember if it was a carnival fish or if it was like I think it was actually one from like PetSmart. I just picked out, but it was like kind of like golden. It wasn't like a orangey goldfish. It was a little bit more tad on the bronzy side. I had a fish once I named Dougie Lingling. That's great, Dougie Lingling. Yeah. Did you flush it? Well, I died, so yes. I can't wait to talk about this movie. 
Especially this, like, look old. how fucking wet she is. Dude. Okay, so, let's, okay. But let's, I, I just like the way he jiggles. Like, I can't wait to talk about this. All right, so let's get into our j- the jiggle physics. There's two things that jiggle: any dead or alive extreme beach volleyball game. Yes. Or hatchet That's fair. three. That's a very fair statement to make. Very fair. <laughs> so this movie, in typical hatchet fashion, picks up directly where the last <laughs> movie left off. It picks up with Daniel Harris just <laughs> blasting holes into Crowley. Crowley is going to do an Undertaker sit up. Yes. He's going to then try to kill Daniel Harris. And now I'll let Brian take away the jizz- jiggle physics here. Yeah, the jiggle physics for sure. So he's like choking her out, right? And his face is basically mush flesh. Yeah, she's um, got her full, how does she escape a, a Crowley? So Crowley has this thing where like he touches you and like just like rips you apart like with, yes. with absolute ease. But for some power. reason, he can't choke out Daniel Harris. I'm going to say it's because he's missing his face. His face is sort of missing. So she does what anybody would do. And by anybody i mean absolutely nobody to this point she puts her whole arm down the middle of his face all the way through to his gullet pulls it out he falls down onto a chainsaw and the chainsaw just kind of cuts through him and as he does that he kind of just like fucking jiggles man (laughs) it's incredible yeah and actually that's such a long chainsaw it chops him in half yes that is the same chainsaw from hatchet 2 where those two guys got lifted that's how you know right. this is a big chainsaw. It lifted two guys up on the ch- on the saw. So you're going two, one, three for hatchet. Yes, I think I one, one, two, three for me. Okay, yeah, I'm somewhere like one and two are tough. Like they're like they're so yeah, okay. good. I, I think, but like three is just like right under those two. Yes. Um, what I would say is that um. So Victor Crowley is uh, looks dead, right? He's cut in half. Clearly, yeah. she, she picks up so the wet. face of Victor Crowley. Yeah. Yes, the 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 ripped off face. He's got weak skin. Well, I mean, a chainsaw went through his skin. He also does have tumors everywhere. It's weak skin because of the tumors. Yeah, probably. So yeah, like Brian was saying, she's gonna carry his face to the police station. And then present his face to the police. And I like how she tries to make sure that she's innocent here by saying, they're dead, they're all dead, and I killed him. Yeah. Strong case on her part. Yeah, yeah. no. I mean, so strong she gets put in holding. <laughs> <laughs> Where she's held. Yeah, she's held there. Yeah, but she also gets bathed. Which is good. Because she has an awesome leg tattoo. So like, it doesn't little- like go up the side. Yeah, it's yeah, like the whole yeah, whole yeah. side. Let me tell you guys a quick little thing about how I watch this batch of movies. So I watched Halloween Five first, right, where she's like a two year old <laughs> almost. <laughs> so if, to go from that to this, where like it was a little weird because like she's kind of naked in this next scene. Yeah, but she's also like forty in this next. Scene. Yeah, still weird though, <laughs> seeing her as a very young child, and then I saw her butt in the next movie was yeah. definitely strange. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, that's weird to go. It's also like. Weird that we are just constantly lumping Daniel Harris movies in the same month. Because last year we also we did, did it, yeah. I believe, Hatchet 2, right almost into Halloween, Halloween four. 4. Yeah, that's true. So. Is she an all-time uh, like Scream Queen, you feel? She's definitely in the mix of Scream Queens, I Yes, think. because she's, she's definitely in See No Evil 2. Yeah, I'm not going to call her like the all-time. But I'm going to say she's like in the conversation of yes. the good Scream Queens. Because like, I, I consider her... Well, she is a horror icon. For sure. Like a scream queen, like she only does shit like this, right? Yes. This is her life. Her life is the Louisiana swamp and then killing Victor Crowley. Who would you consider like the all time screen? Like Jamie Lee Curtis? That's no, a tough. She she branched off. She did Freaky Friday. So a lot of people probably would just because of the first Halloween, but like I don't know, like you gotta give it to someone that just consistently always does horror movies. In yeah. my right. Opinion. Right. So it, it's really tough to say. Yeah. The the I could put Matt to work right now. Look up the all-time <laughs> Scream Queens. Matt, look up, like, the craziest Scream Queens. I Is mean... that chick from Saw who won, like, the actual Scream Queen show? Oh, uh, the girl from Saw 5 who cut her arm off. I don't remember her name. She's literally, like, yeah. in Saw 5, and that's it. As far as well, I no, remember. even the uh, chick from the first one. I know Felicity Rose is probably oh, in the mix. Yeah, she won that show. I did not know that. Yeah, see, I teach you stuff every day. I learned something new. Um, 
I don't know. You know, like modern day, like you got to think like Jenna Ortega right now because she's Samara Weaving. Samara Weaving's another really good one. They're um, just exclusively in horror for the most part. Mia, Mia, what's her name from um, X? Is that considered? Oh yeah, Mia yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Mia another Gotham. good one. She does mainly horror movies. Um, yeah. Cure for wellness horror. I've never seen it. It's not a horror. I think it's more like a like a dark drama. drama. Yeah, I do want to see, see that it. movie. Me never, too. I never had the chance. To. There's another. There's two A twenty four movies I've never seen. Always wanted to, and it's that. Wait, no, that's not A twenty four. I apologize. So Jimmy, the A twenty four movie I want to see is um, Under the Silver Lake. I've always wanted yeah. to see that. It's been on my watch list for years. So oh, Sigourney Weaver. That's another J- good one. Jamie Lee Curtis is one at least from this a Cinema Blend dot com. Uh, mm-hmm. Sigourney Weaver is two. A solid one. Uh, Barbara Cramp- uh, Crampton. Who's that? From Your Next, Reanimator, and Chopping. Who's she in Your Next? Is she, she has the to be mom? the mom. The mom. She's probably. the mom. Yeah. Tony um, Collette. Linda, Linda Blair. Blair. Yeah. Linda Blair makes sense. Uh, Janet Lee. Uh, Why does that name sound so oh, psycho? Psycho. psycho the there. Fog. Halloween H two O. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Michelle Gellar uh, from Scream 2, Buffy That's Vampire Slayer, Cruel Grudge, Intentions. Wh- that I know what you did last terrifying. summer. Terrifying. Um, she didn't give that movie a 10. Anya Taylor-Joy. Oh. I don't know if I would consider Anya. She's stuck. Oh. She's her she star. Se- yeah. She's ranked 7th. Yeah. Well, because like The Witch, uh, uh, Split. Split. Yeah. And The Menu. Those but, are the three that but she then she's in. F- I know. And I guess she, now she, blew, like, she blew I, up. I, she did do The Menu. She blew up, yeah. Is that the one we watched? Uh... Yes, yeah. yeah that was a good it's movie. such a phenomenal yeah. movie, And dude. she also did Furiosa, which I heard actually was very good despite yeah. the poor box office. Um, Adrian Barbeau. Yeah. yeah, I can see it from um, here. Avocado Women of the Massacre Jungle or don't, whatever the you, you know it. Lynn Shay, yeah, for sure. Oh, she's, Lynn Shay's an icon. She should be higher. Icon. Yeah, that, that one should be higher. That she's ranked ninth. Yeah, that's too low for her. She uh, should be higher. D. Wallace from The Hills Have Eyes, Howling, Cujo, Critters, The Frighteners. Oh, shit, that's a... Murderer, oh, wow. Nev, Nev Campbell, she's right. Yeah, of course, yeah. How did we yep. forget? Oh, Nev. the the craft, yeah. Um, Nev Wild who's, Things, whose look this yeah, that movie's terrifying. Samara <laughs> Weaving from yeah, Asher, that's what, yeah Brian said that one. Okay. Um, Heather Landry, Locklear. Uh, that was the star of the first Nightmare. Yep. Yep. I, and New Nightmare, which is great. And the Midnight Club. Um, okay. Yeah, that that's the that okay. she was ranked thirteenth. That's top thirteen. Okay, I like it. That's that was a good, good list. list. I'm proud of you, Matt. You did great. We're not gonna put you to work anymore. Okay, just kidding. Uh, for the rest of this episode, maybe not. Nah, it's kind of crazy. Okay. That Daniel Harris was not mentioned though. I agree. I mean, she clearly is. She was in a terrible horror movie with Eric Roberts. And she's been doing it since birth, basically. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Myers birthed her. <laughs> Pretty much. Michael Myers is her daddy. Yeah. Can you confirm that statement? You're a big Halloween guy. Is Michael Myers her daddy? Not confirmed. No, not confirmed. Okay, we're going not confirmed. Okay, so let's talk police stations. Uh, they obviously go through all the DNA and say none of the blood is hers. So now they think she's a serial killer. Just massacred some? Yeah, yeah. massacred a yeah. bunch of people. So they're going to send a bunch of people to the Honey Island Swamp. Well, that's what she says. She yeah. just says, go to the Honey Island Swamp. Yeah. Uh, also, I forgot if we pointed out the lead sheriff is the boy from Gremlins. This dude? Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. So his like... Uh, his name sounded familiar. The other sheriff one? I forgot his name. Schneiderman? Oh, or Deputy Winslow. Yeah. Uh, he's my least favorite person in this whole movie. Wait, really? Such a fucking shill. Everything's like, I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> I mean, why you why, you don't want to lose your policing job? He like sees Victor Crowley face to face. He's like, oh, "Am I going to lose my job now?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so technically, fucking, he's not wrong. So fucking annoying. Should have been a scene where he actually just tries to arrest Victor Crowley so he doesn't <laughs> lose his job. <laughs> he funny. reads Victor as Miranda, Miranda rights. Right. <laughs> that would actually be hilarious. You think Victor could get a good lawyer? <laughs> no, <laughs> he would kill the lawyer. His lawyer but, would be his father in the urn. Yes. <laughs> you better lawyer the thing up. <laughs> is, though, Victor Crawley can't technically leave the swamp, right? Does it, I think no, he could was... leave. He'd probably lose all his, like, powers. Yeah. Like his... So this is, this is actually the funny thing about these movies. When you actually think about it, Victor Crawley is kind of a non-issue if you just don't go into the yeah. swamp. I call This is like right. one of those movies where they do lore on the go. 
where like this l- journalist yes. comes in and they just kind of create lore as the movie develops. Yeah. Yes. And you're just like, I guess I have to abide by this movie's yeah. rules. Let me give you a comp. Saw two. Fucking Donnie Wahlberg. If he just <laughs> just listens, yeah, does what he's told. Yeah, his there's fucking, no movie. His kid is right, right there. there. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. And so the same like, thing with these guys. If they just don't keep going into the swamp. Yeah, but, so essentially, the sheriff is going to mention that it's a bloodbath because yeah. he's getting a call from Hamilton, the deputy on yes. the scene. There's so many people that are dead. Yes, they're, they're, they're just finding body parts everywhere. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, which I thought was cool, if you were to watch all of these movies back to back to back, it is a uninterrupted sequence of events that takes place over two days. Yeah, it's that true. Very cool. Because the first one ends with... Um, I think like Victor Crowley right at the end, Joel David Moore's character, you supposedly dead. Yes. The second one ends, I believe, when she kills Victor Crowley. Well, no, Victor lo- Crowley's trying to kill her. Kill, trying to kill her. That's right. And it just cuts. Yes. And it the- opens with her getting away from Crowley because the guy comes and helps this her. This movie kind of ends in a similar way, too. Exactly. Yeah. So it's all over the course of like two or three days, which I, th- I think is really cool because I don't think there's any other horror series that does that. There's only one that I know, and it's a great series. We reviewed all the films. And it's called Playing With Dolls. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're right. So good. Fucking hell. A movie that just literally ends. So I can't say they're... What I would say is they're not, like, uninterrupted. Right. So yeah. But they just end. Yes. You know? But like at least... Because these movies, like, pick up Con- where yeah, they end. Yeah, yeah, Those movies just stop, and there's no ever resolution, and you get new characters. For sure. I would say a weak part of this movie is, like, these two, like... The sheriff and their the rela- ex-wife. Their relationship is pretty much, like, a non-factor. I would say I'm happy the way this ended with the way he died, because I was, like, not caring about them getting together, so I'm happy they didn't do that because right. they, they put no investment in them no. getting together at any point. To be fair, this whole setup of them, their dynamic, is just to have the epic kill of the sheriff towards the end. And I, I actually preferred that route. Me too. There was like So that's the thing with these movies. There's n- no one that's ever going to get away. <laughs> that's just like Perry Shen's on his third character now. Yeah, but Perry Shen's not. This is like the first time I think where he's like not a related character. Yes, he's just the, he's, he's just used Andrew. As a, yes, he's used as a. There's two guys that look like you out there. He's like, you just saying that because we're Asian. Yeah, one guy that got like his leg cut off, yeah. and the other guy that got like his head cut off. The sand, uh, the belt sander. Belt sander, yeah. Epic, epic stuff. So it's gonna transition from like them at the sheriff's office, and then to Honey Island Swamp, and. Let's just say the EMTs and the deputy with the eye patch, which one is that? Hamilton. Hamilton. Are going to just start getting brutally massacred in typical Victor Crowley fashion. We get a SWAT team, right? They don't come yet. Oh, they're later. They're co- they're coming to ver- like very soon. Um, but first, like, uh, the ex-wife goes to interview Daniel Harris and be like, right. I know how we could solve this. I need you. We, if you come with me. She has to convince Stephanie Wilson to get her to come. Takes a lot of convincing because he's worried about his, his job. job. Well, dude, come on. First of all, he never should have did it to begin with. He never should have let a criminal out of jail. Yes. Well, supposed criminal. You yes. Know? I do think it's funny, though, how like as they go there and they see the massive amounts of bodies and they're like, well, we got our girl. And then the SWAT team comes in and you're like, you think some girl did all of this? Yeah, like that crazy. man's missing a skull. I do. It's kind of crazy how they repetitively keep talking about like this whole thing about like this. We, the girl did all this. Like they mentioned it like fourteen hundred times. Yes, the girl, the girl, and the SWAT team just instantly ignores it because of like, how absurd there's it is. A million people dead. This yes. dude has a crazy bald spot. So though. that guy is uh, in a lot of things. I literally at first before I realized who he actually was, I thought that was Cricket from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of kind of see it. Yeah. But then I realized he's just in a lot of other horror movies. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's also he is though in It's Always Sunny. He is one of the McPoyles. What? He's in he's one of, he's in one episode as a McPoyle. Probably the McPoyle wedding ep- episode, but Yeah, he's in a lot of things. Shameless, uh Twister. Yeah, I think he's like a guest spot probably. Movies yeah. and shows. But can confirm he is a McPoyle in one episode. Which kind of makes sense because he looks like a McPoyle. He's got that McPoyle face. Yeah, he's got a crazy bald spot. Too. Yeah, his death is awesome. Yeah, 
So they're going to start bringing bodies onto the EMT boats. And then Andrew, uh, Perry Shen's character, is going to say, I think this is the guy. Overalls, tumors. Yeah, they found it. Stocks, <laughs> bonds. Dividends, loans. This is him. So Andrew's going to take him on, and he's going to start getting ready to do an autopsy on him. And, of course, Victor Crawley is going to do the Undertaker sit-up. He's going to take the... Um, oh, the defib. Yes. He's going to defib his head off. Yes. It's actually pretty sick. Which scene. was actually an almost kill in Scream 4. Yes. This one, though, his eyes just start shooting blood out, and then he smashes his Oh, yeah, head. this is not an... Oh, this is a definite kill on this one. <laughs> it's just... Ups upward. It's so incredible. Another thing, um, almost every kill is practical effects in this movie. Yeah, and I, I love that about these movies. Uh, is that the amount of practical that they do and the absurdity of the kills? Yes, is like really refreshing. It's just like something you just don't see anymore. Yes, any CGI they did was because of lighting issues. They had to like either like change the lighting so it could be seen. I yeah. love his fucking overalls, dude. Get me a pair of those. And bury me in those overalls. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. The, I, like now, so Deputy Hamilton's gonna get his head uh, hatcheted in S half, sliced right to yeah. the tree. I believe it stays in consistency that there is at least one hatchet kill in every single hatchet movie. Good, as long as they keep so, that. What movie has the best kills? I'm not talking about best overall movie. What movie has the, like the craziest kills this one has some pretty good ones so here's the thing the schneiderman kill is legitimately gnarly yeah um but i think hatchet 2 wins because there's three super iconic kills in that one the chainsaw going up with the it's testicles really rolling down yeah the girl getting fucked by the guy and the guy getting his head cut off mm -hmm. and then perry shen's sand belt to the back yeah. of the head goes on for so long and it's so brutal yeah. Also, that guy gets curb stomped on the table. Right. There's a better fatality in this where uh, Tony Todd gets his entire body ripped out of his skin. Mm. I had you to, personally. There, there's one of those kills in this movie, too, with the Derek Mears, the, yes. the SWAT guy, where he just rips the spine out, like Mortal Kombat style. It's so cool. I just like how he, like, so easily, like, as, as like, simple as a paper cut, just rips limbs off. I know. Yeah, he's so just raw power. He just kills the entire police force. I like that kill. That was a good one. Throws the guy's mouth on the tree branch. He's worried about his branch. job again. Yeah, he's really <laughs> he nervous about his job. He actually just opens a guy's chest in this movie. Yeah. It's crazy. It's wild. It's fabulous. Like, imagine, like, I just grabbed you like this and had the ability to rip your chest open. It's like, that's crazy. Maribeth Dunn's thing. I'm sure in your, like, prime you could poke a hole in there. <laughs> I could. I honestly, if I tried now, I don't think I could even... Tug on your shirt enough to like make it rip the rip. shirt yeah. even. Like I ain't Hulk Hogan. Speaking of shirts, you wearing a cowtail shirt? Yeah, I have style. Explain to the audience what a cowtail is. The best form of candy one can eat is a piece of caramel, but in the center is white cream. White cream center. Yeah. This what? show is brought to you in part by our fabulous sponsors today, Hole Pokes. <laughs> have you ever wanted to get holes in your shirt? Shane's finger tops will just put a hole He's right in your shirt. Fingers. Shout out uh, Sangria Bud Light. <laughs> I love how we just we shout out it. companies. That we die. love it. Just Matt, like, do you have a Sangria? Just like the great Shane Gillis, I'd like to also shout out Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> this struggling Bud Light company. I would also like to <laughs> shout, shout out Cum Dye. <laughs> Cum oh, Dye. Oh, that's, that's one of our stuff. great sponsors. It's that stuff. Matt, um, do you want a sangria Bud Light? Eventually. What I would He'll like is like I feel like all of these seltzer, the, 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 the seltzer splash that came in over like the last 15 years has been nuts. Because I feel like all they do is create one thing to one up each other and then the rest of the brands buy, get that thing. Yeah. What I mean by that is like you have like White Claws and then everybody does seltzers. Then yeah. you have one that starts with like hard lemonades, yep. like truly. Then they all get hard lemonades. Yep. Then like one of them gets tea, they all get teas. Then High Noons with vodka, now they all have a vodka well, line. Yes. Watch, you're going to see a, a whole sangria line now. Well, that's like even High Noon. High Noon does the tequila ones now, the tequila yeah. mixes. But like who's that bitch? Do you know what I'm saying? Like who's okay, the so pop bitch? That's, that's that, it's White Claw because I feel like White Claw is the OG. White Claw. <laughs> So it's not my personal favorite. I think what, so it's tough to say because like, I do kind of agree with you in terms of like just plain seltzer, but like their teas are ass. Yes. You know, like well, personal favorite. I still think truly berry. 
I think is truly the best, is my favorite. The truly berry is probably my favorite thing. That's the, the best flavored ones. I'll go truly like the flavors. Yeah, but like Bud Light, they I deliver. Like Bud Light's got like the great like. They're like the X factor because they have the sodas. They have these like saying like yeah. they have these cool like other flavors that are like unique. Yeah. But then also the teas are tough because then you have like Surfside, which is pretty good. Surfside is good. Yeah. Twisted tea. Twisted that tea. Was, that was I feel like yeah. that, that one's That's not seltzer that. though. That's just Oh yeah. yeah that's just tea. Arnold Palmer Surfside alert. Palmy. Isn't isn't look it up. I think Surfside is 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 got to work. Seltzer, am I wrong? I think so. I think so too. But maybe I'm wrong. It's definitely hard tea. But maybe you're right. Did you ever think of that? Maybe he's right. Stop. Please stop. Maybe he's right. Okay. So while he's looking that up, I'm just going to start to paint the picture yeah, of the next scene. Uh, Win, Dete- uh, Deputy Winslow, the ex-wife. Oh, did, what's her name? Just so I can actually call oh, her. Oh, I called her cunt. During the That's movie. rude. That's I, so rude. I can find her name. We have our producer looking up. Yes. Like, just, I, just real size. quick. I just want to know her name. So I, I, because she was such a it's nothing just a, character. It's just a nice tape. But what, what are we looking up? Oh, just a nice tape. Yeah, no, it's just a nice tape. Perfect. Right. Okay. Um, the I name, just want. The, I think her name is Carolyn Williams. I think. Her, okay. Yeah. It was this the ex wife's name, Carolyn. That's her real name. I think. Oh, so what's her her name in the in the <laughs> Amanda? <laughs> Amanda. Okay. So Deputy Winslow, Amanda, and uh, Daniel Harris's character. They're all going to get the ashes. Of Victor Crawley's dad and the greatest character in the Hatchet series has them. Sid Haig, the cameo, yeah. fucking is amazing cameo. This, honestly, this scene almost knocked this movie up a full point. I agree. I couldn't believe when he came on the screen. I was like, what? <laughs> you eyeing me, boy? I it, mean, he's crazy racist, but you oh, know. dude, he it's is so like wildly racist. And it's. Fabulous. I know I do think like the dynamic of him and the pussy cop yes. were pretty good. Oh, it's incredible. I thought they they played off each other so yeah, well. I, I thought that was pretty funny. So he's there because he has the ashes. ashes. I love it because he kept making fun of him for mumbling and he spoke with such clarity. He's the only person who speaks clear the whole movie, and I think that's what makes He's that the joke only person so funny. that has a non accent yes. in like the whole movie. Ah, uh, it did it's so funny. Did we talk about the main bald SWAT guy? No, I, I was I just figured we talk about their subplot first instead of jumping back and forth, and then we'll come and just talk about. So I want to talk about them. Yeah, we will. We will. Let's give it a second. Give it a second. Yeah, it's great. Oh, can you do that one more time? Give, give it, it a second. second. I like that. So give it a second. Mm. They're gonna, you know, talk to Sid Haig. He's Very gonna, tender. He, he keeps. I know your kind of people, boy. Yeah, that whole kind of he laid shield. it on thick. He did drop an, uh, a, a a negro at the end of it. He did. He did. It's so funny. He did. He did capitalize on the racism it, for it, sure. It made me. And we just watched Three from Hell, and this made me realize more how much I love Sid Haig. He's so funny. He's like, incredible. Rip, um, rip. I th- I think that stereotype of like the backward hick was he did like pretty much spot on. And the thing is he talked like Sid Haig and he had the most believable new Orleans accent out of anyone in the movie. That's fair. <laughs> is he the, from new, where's Sid Haig from? Can I get a Sid Haig? Back yeah. Check? Yeah. I, I've got enough. So yeah, they get the ashes and their whole storyline now is just getting back to the swamp. So we really don't have to talk about them till the end. So He's now California, California, Cali. Okay. Okay. That's Surprising. not Louisiana. <laughs> it ain't at all. All right, so now we're back in in the the Honey Island Swamp. Everyone is dead except the SWAT team and some of the police force. And I want to say what Mike is thinking. He wants to talk about the head SWAT guy, I Taylor really Hawes. Do. And I, I agree with you. He's tall. He's he so looks tall. menacing, but you want more muscles on your lead SWAT guy. Yeah, he's not svelte enough. Who wants a dirty asshole? Nobody no one. needs. You ever get your shit bleached? An asshole dirty. No, but. <laughs> I would. I, I, I would consider it. If I never had to get rid of the hair, it'd be great. Be fantastic. Think about never having to shave your face again. See, the thing is, I wish I could just have like a permanent like five o'clock so you, shadow you where it like doesn't a, grow anymore or less. I, think, I can't go baby face. I think Bri, Bri wants like a 
two to three week beard permanently. Yeah, that's like the best. Yeah, you're right. You know me. Yeah, it's like that two to three week beard that hits so well. But when you get two more than that, I just don't like yeah. it that long. Yeah, like my beard's too thick right now. It's but thick. I've just been super lazy. And don't want yeah, to shave. again, shaving sucks. Yeah, it's painful. It is. I hate it. I have very sensitive skin. My shit gets all red and bumpy. Yes, because I have sensitive skin. I feel your pain. So let's talk about Hawes. Hawes. Hawes? Tyler Hawes. Tyler Hawes. Is it Tyler Hawes? Can I get a name check on the character? I <laughs> stroked out for a second. Der- yeah. Derek Mears. That's Derek Mears. Um, I think he's in other horror movies as well. So after that, uh, look up what horror movies you can he's check in. the Derek Mears horror. Matt, movie I know list. we said we wouldn't put you to work after you. He's did on the left, but, Matt, <laughs> in the blue background. We, we lied. What's his name? You passed him up. He's right there. Oh, oh yeah, Hawes. Oh, H A W. Let's just say his first name is Tyler. What other movies is he in? Look that up. Give me something. Second, gotta be a villain in a movie. You know he's in The Hills Have Eyes. For sure. He's in Swamp Things. Mm. Uh, he plays Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th remake. Yes. Uh, okay. Alita Battle Angel. I don't know what that is. I, I remember that movie. Yeah, me too. Um, Predators. He plays a classic Predator. Okay. Uh, oh, he plays the Predator in Predators. Yes. Okay. Oh, so he's kind of like our new age Kane Hodder. Yeah. Derek Mears. That's Derek Mears. Mears. Who doesn't have the muscle tone Mike would have desired. And he needs to tighten up. (laughs) Okay. So we'll tighten him up as we talk about how... Not the Black Keys song. (laughs) Which is the name of my fourth studio album that is Tighten Him Up. Not Tighten Up to be confused with the Black Keys hit single, Tighten Him Up, which is my fourth studio album. Love it. I'll listen to it. I feel like Mike G hates what I just did. I loved it. <laughs> That's such a lie, because if I would have did that, he would have hated it. I would have described that as like gold on the ceiling. Also another hit single <laughs> from a Black Keys. <laughs> so we're just a Black Keys podcast now. And if you don't know any of what we're talking about, you must be a lonely boy, which is another single. Another <laughs> from single the, from the Black Keys. <laughs> from the two-piece band, <laughs> the Black Keys. <laughs> this is absurd. And this is all absurd. This could take you on an emotional roller coaster. High, low, which is another hit single from <laughs> from <laughs> the two piece, <laughs> to, from the two piece great band from the indie acclaimed. group. <laughs> Indie Darlings, <laughs> the Black Keys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you're right. If you, <laughs> you if you did that, I would have hated it. Right. But Bryce right. like smarter and funnier and better looking. No, uh, yeah, I, I got that. Um, okay. So he also wears his backwards hat way better. Oh, thanks. I, must I appreciate say. that. Your hair's so fucking straight. It's scaring me. Mine. <laughs> Your hair is so straight. It's the straightest thing in this room right now. There's nothing straighter. There can't be. It's impossible. <laughs> Dude, you know how people have like hat hair? Yeah. You're not capable no, of that. Kind of like he's not capable of Wait, growing hair. I might be hair. able to mess it up, let's see. <laughs> no, that shit's straight. Actually, it's, eh. it's like pointy straight though. Yeah. Like in every direction is just straight. Yeah. Of course it's not going to move because no. I wonder what, what, like, what is your hair like if you don't shower for a while? Oh, it's all over the place. Is that like just grease too? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. That's why I, I have to shower like every day. This hair gets oily. It gets crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's nuts. You got a good head of hair, though. Thank you. Got some gray in my beard now, too, to go with it. We're, gonna, we're, I, we're the, getting older. We're yeah. getting, uh, the grays are coming in, and I like them. Me, too. Yeah. I like the, because my hair doesn't have gray, so I like the contrast. The salt the and pepper contrast, for sure. Hair. So you're not going to use just for men. So. No, I, I personally, I like the gray in the beard. You're going to go with it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Matt. Matt's young. He doesn't got to worry about that. Probably another reason I would like to throw him out the window right now. Yeah, just fucking take him and just chuck him. Because of how young he is, you know? Yeah, he's just so young and supple. We all like, want to see a match-shaped hole through that glass. <laughs> yeah, like we're sitting like here. Like he's Wiley Coyote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like, how old are you, Matt? 27. He's older than I thought. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember Matt and the Gooch just, like, being, like, like two feet tall. <laughs> And now, he's tw- run over. and now he's 27. You know what's literally crazy? How I'm like, wait, you can't be thir- 27. I know I'm six years older than you. And then I realized that I'm 33 and old because I thought I was 31 yeah. for a minute. <laughs> no joke, Matt. I thought you might have been like 23. Just forget you're like fucking this old. 
It, I know all the time. I think I'm like, oh, I'm 30, right? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm 33. Yeah. I don't know why I had it programmed that I was 31. Yeah. It's fucking sick. It's and so unstoppable because I was closer to 30, which is an unstoppable which age. Is, yes. And unstoppably great. It's the best. Yeah, but age. we're getting close to 35, which is just the downward spiral of a society. That's true. Yeah. I think when I hit that, I might give up. <laughs> <laughs> dark but you know what else is dark the swamp at night so they're gonna keep going they're gonna confirmed run it is tyler hawes okay they're gonna run into andrew andrew is the paramedic played by perry shen uh he's gonna be like i was hiding and they're like you killed all these fucking people he's like no i was hiding that is someone's balls in the tree yes you can't you gotta hide mm. and they are just convinced they have to go in murder and they're going to get to the big Honey Island Swamp classic hatchet house where Victor Crowley is going to murder everyone with his bare hand. I think he starts with the SWAT leader. Like he literally puts him up against the tree and then jams his arm into his body. But yeah, I know. He actually does kill everyone else first because they have that big fight in the the like the center where he just has like his hatchet i think or what or axe or whatever and he just starts swinging and cutting heads off right now uh that's what it happened already unless i'm mistaken no they the, after she gets pulled so the one girl gets pulled she gets into, pulled by her top of her jaw yeah she gets pulled in by her jaw and yeah. that's when after that they have oh, the big fight i do like her kill though because like she's the one that they pull in and Everyone's like waiting around and all you do, because you can't see her. She's in the house and you yes. just hear her bones crunch. Yes. Yeah, that Ooh. was pretty sick. Yeah. Ooh. And then they, he just like throws her body out. Yeah. Which I don't even want to know what he was doing in there. And, and he now, just rips that one guy's body in yeah, half. Yeah, so the, yeah, this is where he oh, kills okay, all the yeah. police first. But once all these cops are dead, that's when Hawes runs in. And he's like, I'm going to be the hero. Well, I mean, like he decided to cancel the military call. Yeah. And take things on himself. Uh, you might, I think you skip. yeah, went past it. Yeah, it's right here. It's funny though, like Hawes just watched every single one of his SWAT guys get brutally murdered. And then for some reason, he thinks he could just 1v1 him. But then Ty uh, the Tyler, uh, uh, Victor Crowley turns Hawes into an earthworm. Yeah, he does look like an earthworm. Like, the amount of triple, quadruple neck, 16 up all neck. You want to know what it is? It's like, look at Victor's muscle tone compared to Hawes. He, he yeah. likes to all of his muscle no tone. fucking tone to him. That's yes. the problem. He needs to take time out of his day to work on his body because, quite frankly, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sick. So. He makes the calls, but he's got no tone behind it. No, no tone <laughs> like, at all. How do you feel like you're making all these calls and you can't back it up with any muscle tone? So <laughs> Crawley's going to grab Rick, and he's going to try to jam Rick's face into what I can only consider the the bone spikes. Yeah, I don't really know. It never really happens. What I would say is, how do you know that guy's name is Rick? Are you just making a call? Oh, no. He calls this... He calls him says, Rick? Yeah. Schneiderman calls him. He's like, sorry, Rick. Oh, sorry, Rick. Got it. And then he shoots the rocket launcher, completely misses the giant Victor Crawley target, and, and he hits, hits the, the guy. Rick. It's so fucking funny when I saw that. And then they're going to, like, run away because Schneiderman's going to take a flaming wood pile to the back. Yes. Yes, yeah. which is great. Which I think paralyzes him. I don't know why, like, Schneiderman thinks he got him. He clearly missed. Yeah. So clearly foolish. the man was standing there. I think Victor Crowley just went to get a, a flaming piece of wood for a second. At most, Crowley took, like, shrapnel there. That's yeah. about it. I just don't know why they think it would kill him. Well, little do they know, nothing besides dad ash. Yeah. That's the thing. So, like, in, in all intents and purposes, Daniel Harris murdered the fuck out of Victor Crowley. However, because of the curse, he's basically reborn every day. Yeah. And he looks pretty much as good as new. And when I mean as good as new, I mean, like, as good as he was deformed in the first place. I mean, for a deformed guy, he's looking good. So, Look at the tone. <laughs> so he's got so much tone. Schneiderman's going to get a pretty bad death here because he's going to get both of his arms ripped off now mm. and then just get his head pushed into the, the wet... Mud bog. Oh, he's gonna get the bog mud. Yeah, where he slowly drowns with his arms ripped off. So, not to like a spoiler or anything, 
I'm going to bring up this death a little later. This one? If you uh, catch my drift. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, you this saw, is... Because yeah. he's smart and you're not. Yeah, this yeah. is a lot of bog mud. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Oh, it's so great. Look at that fucking bubble of bog mud. <laughs> look, at the, look at those boots that... I'm he does have great. Could you imagine the soul support on those Can't fucking me, plugs? Um, imagine me being buried in the that boot slash fucking overall combo. <laughs> yeah. You should wear that. No, I want to be buried. In no, that you should just wear it. Like naturally. I'm gonna hit 35. I want to be buried in that shit. Okay. <laughs> Here's what we don't talk about. You know how he's like reborn every yes. night, yeah. but nobody talks about like how many times his house gets burned down. And he has to rebuild. <laughs> I feel like he has to rebuild his burned house You're every right. night. I'm pretty sure it keeps blowing up. And he yeah. he looks back at. It, he's like, oh fuck, I gotta rebuild this thing again. That's Maybe where the house gets- just gets reborn with him. No, no, no. That's where he gets all his tone. Because he's constantly lifting and hammering wood. You know all those trees he has to cut down, that thick lumber? True, because he died like he died young, right? So like he wasn't toned as a kid. He got reborn as a forty year old man. I think he was a ripped fucking boy. <laughs> he was a huge he was a really ripped the boy. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> um what I would say about Hatchet and I like is because it you really does utilize the title like Hatchet with the overall story yes. of Victor Crowley, because he was killed by his father, who, who as he was burning by prank kids with a hatchet. With a hatchet, like it makes sense. He still has that slice down the mm-hmm. middle of his forehead. You have movies like you know the classic axe grinder, where you have no idea. There's no axe or grinding. No, terrible, terrible movie. But yeah, so they, they play it well. The title makes sense. What about Midnight Meat Train? There's, There's Midnight. Is there a meat train? There's definitely a train. Actually, there's meat on it, too. Isn't Bradley Cooper in that movie? And so is Leslie Bibb. And Vinnie Jones. Yeah. That is a cast. That's it a great does. movie. It's a really a good movie. movie. I don't review it one I day. I fuck that cast. Yeah. I like the ending, too. <laughs> I, I like the movie. Sure, it's a good movie. So, uh, the sheriff, the uh, Speaking SWAT of lady, fuck, and that's... Andrew are going to make it back Very onto nice the hunches. EMT boat. And they think they're... Not safe, but they they they're able to get the radio. They call in the 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 army to come and airlift them out. They just have to sit and wait. But Victor Crowley has She's the so belt sander, hot. and he's going to start great. belt sanding through the door of yep. the boat. I do like the call that he has with the military. It's incredible. He's like, yeah, we're going to need to be airlifted out of here. We're going to need supply boats, and we're going to need this fucking Pronto. He's like, yeah, okay, I got those airlifts for you. I got those boats. Check, check. You need the, uh, and then he's like, paratroopers? You need, like, he, he like goes down all of the support yeah. with no evidence. And they're just like, yeah, th- yep, yep, And yep. they're like, well, what's the problem? He's like, crazy gunman. <laughs> well, because if he said Crowley, no one would have came, come, yeah. Right? If I think he would have believed him. I think so. So but you're right. That was the idea behind it. Wow, she's got a set on her, huh? <laughs> I just noticed that. I watched this whole movie the other day. I just noticed she's got a set. <laughs> you're sick. She also kind of looks like the mom from Home Alone. Kevin! <laughs> Imagine you're banging that Home Alone mom, and the whole time she's just screaming, Kevin! <laughs> I guess it'd be funny if your name was Kevin. But what if it's not? It's really weird. Would that make you like insecure? No, it'd just be really like, weird. Why is she screaming Kevin's name? Who's Kevin? <laughs> so this is like my favorite kill in the movie, to yes. be honest. Yeah, you mention it. Uh, because you don't see him. It's not the best kill, but it's memorable because if you've seen this movie from the very first one, it ends with the potential dead protagonist and Joel David Moore. And it, it moves on. You don't even hear about him in yeah. the second movie. And he comes back in the third movie because his Perry Shen's character goes near the boat and he just is like alive. He starts talking to him for one second. <laughs> he just had his hand before he gets a fucking hatchet <laughs> toss in the middle of his forehead. It's pretty funny. It's a good way to tie his Yeah, it's together. pretty funny because you're like, it's in the span of like a day or two. So he would, in theory, still possibly be alive. So Yeah. You it, think Crowley gets along with like the gators that are there? That's a good point. So you see this random crocodile hold up. You totally don't see a crocodile at all. No. And it just, just pops out to get a quick kill. I think he's like really good friends with all the swamp animals. Probably he's been living there for years. So while the three are waiting on the... Police boat, mm. EMT boat. The other three are going to make their way to the swamp. Winslow, Daniel Harris, uh, uh, other woman. Uh, Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> other woman. Yeah, I forgot her name again. I'm really bad today with the names. Uh, they're eventually going to make it to the swamp. And 
he she's gonna call out for her ex husband, mm. which causes him to do the stupidest decision of the movie, which is stick his head through the hole. Second stupidest. Where, they were stupidest. The uh, this uh, police chick. Oh, when she does it right after him. Yeah. That was retarded. Because are you fucking kidding me, girl? What I think are you doing? At the same time, wasn't someone outside screaming for Victor Crowley, and he was like nowhere to be found? So yes. obviously, he's probably right there waiting for her. Yes. So he sticks his head through. They're trying to pull him back, but he's just getting his shit sanded. Yeah, it's pretty. I liked it though because like I was mentioning, dope. they were trying to like unite this like weird like ro- like ex romance, but like. They were not developing it, so I'm very happy they went the route of like preventing that from happening right yes. away by brutally murdering him in probably the worst fashion. Oh my god, the belt sander is just so slow and brutal. slow and bloody and beautiful. Yeah, so he's just absolutely cooked. And now this, the worst decision of the movie is it's it's the worst because of like multiple things. One, she knows Victor Crawley's still right out there. Two, she's just trying to get a gun. That has clearly proven not to do anything the entire movie. Right. So she reaches for the gun. The dude, he's literally begging her not not to to do do it. it. He's literally begging for her. Some would say he's howling for you, which is another hit single from the band The Black Keys. From (laughs) Grammy-nominated two-piece, The Black Keys. The indie darlings, like Mike said. Yes. Did you know they were once in an episode of workaholics. Yeah, that's true. That is true. They're in a courtroom. Yeah. All true. Yeah. Because they're indie darlings. The, the black two piece. piece. Yeah, the group. Emmy nominated. The Emmys? <laughs> the Grammy. Were they were nominated for an Emmy for that yeah. cameo appearance in workaholics? They should have been. Because <laughs> I think they both each have one line because they're a two piece. <laughs> the black keys. Keys, yes. Yes. Keys, plural. <laughs> Because they're a two piece. Yes. If it was one guy, it would be Black Key. (laughs) The Black Key. (laughs) Since there's two, they added a the and an S. So they're the Black Keys. I get it now. Wow. Critically Critically acclaimed acclaimed Black Keys. Indie darling. Look at that guy's head spurt. Is that what you call that? A spurt? (laughs) (laughs) Kind of like when you have a growth spurt? Yeah, it's a head spurt. (laughs) It's beautiful. <laughs> I don't know why I got the topic of Sesame Street in my head, but <laughs> there's no spurt, but there's Bert. Hey, Bert. <laughs> hey, Bert. <laughs> yeah, Bert's kind of gay. <laughs> he's super gay. Hey, I think he's gay. <laughs> hey, Bert. <laughs> or is Ernie the gay one? That's one of them. They might be gay lovers. That would be cool. Yeah, I always this, thought that. At this point, I wouldn't doubt. I wouldn't doubt they yeah. put that on there. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it now. So yeah, the girl's just gonna get fucking her shit ripped. She's so fucking. Yeah, this dumb. was like one of the worst decisions ever. So Perry Shen, who's lived this in three different lifetimes, is like, no, don't do yeah. this. I've seen this before. Fun fact: she played young Victor Crowley. What? Get this out girl? of here! Really? Yes. Wow. In the first movie, when they do that I flashback, I believe so. Or the, with, I think it's the second one. Maybe with, I, I love what Hatchet does because Kane Hodder plays Victor Crowley and Thomas Crowley, the father. It's actually incredible. Uh, yeah, let me. I'm just gonna double check. I like. So I'm not just giving. I mean, you, yeah, no, it's confirmed. Yeah, yes. Yes. I love how Matt got to that before you. Yeah. Well, it's his job. You know what they should do? They should come out with another Victor Crowley and have Derek Mears play Victor Crowley because it's like a passing of the torch, right? Because Kane Hodder yeah. played Jason, Derek Mears played Jason, mm-hmm. and now once he moves on, Kane Hodder to bigger and better, Derek Mears could play Victor Crowley. Maybe he does in the fourth one. The f- fourth one, Victor Crowley. Does he? Actually, no, I don't think he does. I think it's, it's still Kane Hodder, right? But we do eventually have to get to that movie. Sure, this is not the last we, one. We will finally wrap up another series of movies. Crazy. And we love doing that on this podcast. We do. But I, what I would say is this is one of the few slasher series, maybe besides Scream, where everyone is fucking enjoyable. Yes. Agreed. Because even the fourth one's a very enjoyable movie. And, and what I'm so shocked about, and I'll get it in my review, is like how similar all of these movies are and they just continue to stay fresh with material. Agreed. Because they come out with creative ways to kill the every everything with universally the same concept, concept of going yep. into the bog, yes. into the bayou. So Keen Hodder does uh, he's the uh, Victor Crowley in and Victor Crowley. 
yeah. Perry, uh, Perry Shen is also in that one. Yeah, he, he has to play he Actually, it's the first one, though. He plays the same character. Yeah. Because Andrew survives. Yeah. He does. Spoiler. Crazy. Um, so Andrew survives, but now we got to get to the final three. So they get up to Crowley. They tell Daniel Harris to uh, Mary Beth Dunstan. Finally remembered her name. To give the ashes to Crowley. So she's going to present the ashes to Crowley. But it doesn't go as intended, so Deputy Winslow has to unload on him. I love good unloading. He thinks he killed him for some reason, and he steps over him, and he starts shooting him more. So, of course, Crowley just gets up and rips his fucking oh, chest open. So satisfying. Well, man, this man's worried. It is, everything is a career conflict. Right. Do you think he's going to get fired after he died? Uh, no. Actually, he probably still might get promoted because he might be the most alive of the police department. <laughs> Their police department is literally just Gone. hurled all over the bayou. Hire a whole new staff. <laughs> it's like that thing, though, where they're just going to send more police departments in to get the bodies, and they're just going to keep losing police It's a constant department. cycle. Yes, it's like the cats in the wall. So then, once this is <laughs> failing, uh, Amanda's going to go up, and you know what this reminded me of? Where she's like, I believed in you. I just thought of fucking um, uh, Maximum I Overdrive. Where she's like, we made you. We made you. I just thought of her the going up. She's like, screaming. we believed in you. So that doesn't work. She gets her head ripped off. And then. Like, does Victor Crowley fucking care that you believe the legend? Like. He, he, he's literally, I, I'm just going to say, he's kind of retarded. He's mega retarded. Yeah. No, no. So he's going to now pick up. By the way, why they still left Daniel Harris fully handcuffed this entire time is absurd. And in a sweatsuit. Because yeah. he was worried about his job. her yep. and losing his job. Where, where did she get this Tommy gun from? Well, that's, that's we're going to get to that. Because okay. I actually don't know because he did not have that gun. Uh, they're gonna, she's going to get picked up. She's going to get impaled on a tree branch. But she's going to be able to fucking hit Victor Crowley in the head with the melting ashes. Yeah. Victor Crowley's going to slowly start to melt. And then she pulls off a fucking A-12 shotgun or something. I don't know where yeah. she found this. Is this like one of those like mini bazookas? What is this thing? I don't know. It it's like a grenade a, launcher? It looks, like, it looks like a striker. The, the, the striker, yes. That's what I was thinking of, a striker. From, from Call of Duty. Yeah. And I love, though, how she's begging him to get up despite him clearly being melted. Yeah, I mean, he's gotten up so many times before, but that's just yeah. after every night. I mean... Yeah. So he doesn't get up. She says, fuck it. And then she just fucking blows him away. Here's my question. So she blows him away, right? But what if she was to wait the entire night for him to be reborn? Is it just like a reality? Like reality just cuts and he just is completely reformed? See, that's a thing. I actually don't know. Or does he slowly reform? I like to think he slowly oozes back together. I like to think reality cuts. And then he's just back? It's like that scene in the Gooch where... <laughs> No one's going to know what the fuck I'm talking about. They Where, should, um, though. They, yeah, they should. should. Where Kojak just doesn't have a gun, and then a second later, he has That's a gun. Incredible. <laughs> what a good scene. Check out our movie, The Gooch, one day when we post it. Yep. If you don't like it. To be fair, there's no nothing confrontational about that movie. It's just we would get sued to oblivion because of all the copyrighted music we used. <laughs> Do you like Smashing Pumpkins? They're in there. <laughs> don't say that. We'll get sued anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so... Uh, Daniel Harris slowly dies. Andrew is rescued by the military. And as far as we know, that is the end of Victor Crowley. Yeah, I think the movie just cuts with her gasping for breath because she got impaled by a tree. Yep. Did we mention that? Uh, no, but oh, I mentioned she got impaled by a tree. Yeah. But the, yeah, that is how the movie so ends. So she just takes a couple of breaths and that's how it ends. How and do you guys like that blue flame he's got inside his body when she blows him up? That's the reality. Is yeah. the blue flame? <laughs> Yeah, that's reality forming itself. Good stuff. Fun movie. Great action. Love good time. It. Hatchet 3, start of October. And that's why I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. And I'm also going to give it a 6 out of 10. Sorry. I'll go higher. 7. You can explain your review. I just got excited. No, I was so excited. I just went, So we're going 6, 6, 7? See, I can't give it as... I think I gave Hatchet 2 a 7, and this isn't as good as Hatchet 2. And you know what's crazy? I'm giving this a 6 out of 10, and I got married two days ago. You did! Congrats! (laughs) Congrats to Brian (laughs) Let's go! (laughs) Yay. Just want to bring that up. That wedding was a 10 out of 10. Oh, yes, Yes, sir. Yes, it 
was. <laughs> We were in there with the fucking alpacas and the. I rode one down. Yeah, well, hell yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, almost I'm, as good I'm as sure three. Everybody was sober that night. <laughs> everybody was sober. There wasn't a fight at the after party. I'm almost positive Brian rode an alpaca down the aisle while chugging an espresso martini. That's I could true. have sworn I saw it. Signature drinks. Did Shane pop that goddamn shirt off? My shirt was barely on. His you, pants were off. It was crazy. Ass. People were saying like they could not believe how hairy your ass was. <laughs> what a night. I forgot to <laughs> shave. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. So with that said, 6 out of 10, it's a great, gory slasher that, like Brian said, stay consistent. This and Scream, always consistent. And consistency is key because when you got movies like Friday the 13th or Texas Chainsaw or Nightmare on Elm Street that all took a deep dive off a cliff or Halloween, which took multiple dives off of multiple cliffs, this is a breath of fresh air. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah, that's why I looked at you. So I thought you were doing one of the those. No, that, of- that was last set of episodes. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> That outside of over. a few annoying characters that are just worried about their job too much <laughs> um and like annoying big titted woman um <laughs> this movie's awesome dude my favorite part is it knows what it is and it sticks to it yep it's got the death lots of death danielle harris after i watched her be a uh, eight-year-old <laughs> like the day before well we're still gonna review that that's coming up yeah, no, this movie is fun as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got everything you want, kill-wise. Doesn't lack on the kills. Why else are you watching this if not for the kills? Victor Crowley, he's in overalls. I want them. <laughs> I want to die in them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but not for one second was I ever bored, or was this ever a, a hard watch? So seven, solid seven. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to give this, like I said, like a really strong six because I just want to get lost in Victor Crowley's overalls. <laughs> like, they're so great. <laughs> those fucking boots, too. Yeah, those great chompers he has. Incredible. Love it. What I would say about this film is, to so what they said, not to repeat it, but really to just emphasize, it's just super fun and doesn't lay on anything too thick. It's playful, it's comedic, and it's fresh. Like, how many times can you go into Louisiana and have that same concept and have it be effective? And this movie just does that. It literally does that again. It, it does it so well. In spades. With great characters, just f- awesome, clever kills and practical effects, which makes it super refreshing. And it's just like good, good character, good banter and humor. Yeah, and this movie just really starts even bringing in some cameos that really just make it such a joy to watch. So, nothing else I can say. More or less, it's just an adventure, fun, great atmosphere. And I, the only other thing I'll say is like the really subtle Black Keys references were just <laughs> yeah. great. It's true. It's true. Like. The the ceiling on Crowley's house, it got blown up, but if you could see, there's gold up there. There's you gold. That, you said that one already. And in that house, he was probably a lonely boy. Okay, this were, <laughs> okay. these were all set. Uh, let's talk Necro. I'm going to go... Hmm, a lot of good choices. I'm going to go with Schneiderman. Because of the bog water. Uh, yeah. So that's what I was going at before, and that went over your head because you're fucking dumb. <laughs> but your hair's straight. Your hair's you got that going for very you. Very straight. Okay, oh. so you're obviously going Schneiderman. Yeah, the bog mud. Mm-hmm. Shit was crazy. Yeah, best kill in the movie, for sure. I'm definitely going to lose this, but I'm going with the Joel David Moore kill. I just thought that was super clever to bring him back just to get killed. It was good. So I just got to make a note of that. I thought that was pretty awesome and clever for this movie to do, which is why it's such a great movie. Like yeah, great agree. series. I almost want to change to that just so Mike doesn't win. But think about the bog mud. Yeah. Think they, about he's the best kill of the movie. The fucking classic <laughs> indie darlings, <laughs> the duo Black Keys. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, literally, just this great, great duo. I think one of their albums is named Brothers because of their duo. I don't think they're brothers, but it's I never a good knew they were brothers. I learned something new. I, I don't think they are. That's oh. how biology works. <laughs> okay. Speaking of biology, Matt, get ready. Schneiderman. You 
were the historian of the swamp. You had only moved there three years ago, but you knew the story of Victor Crowley. You believed the story of Victor Crowley. You didn't fuck around in the swamps of Victor Crowley till you had to. But you came prepared. You had guns. You had machetes. You had rocket launchers. But you hated Rick. And your hatred of Rick cost you everything. Because instead of taking out the giant target that was Victor Crowley, you killed Rick. So you think he meant to shoot it Rick? It seemed like it. And he thought he got his target, target. so maybe that was it. Maybe Rick was his target. I don't know. But man, did we get to see the bog mud water, the the mud bog, in its full glory. The bubbles. Love it. Glorious, glorious bubbles. bubbles. And for that reason, we're honoring you in our Necronomicon. And that is the beginning of Halloween month. I would say we kicked that off pretty strong hatchet three was pretty great i have a question matt can you look up because i don't think it's just from frogs how does the bog burp <laughs> like what creates the bog bubbles and then can you actually tell the audience how what is the search in google that you're putting in to find this information <laughs> <laughs> Are you just typing what creates the bog? What, what creates the bog? I think he's bog? writing the next Black Key song. <laughs> <laughs> so it seemed like there was a lot of typing there. Uh, I should break your bubbles fingers. Bubbles and bogs <laughs> are created by the release of methane. Meth? Ain. Methane. Uh -oh. Also known as marsh gas. Oh, <laughs> we were so close. That was so worth it. Marsh gas. <laughs> I That's love it. So good. I love marsh gas. My favorite. You know what else is my favorite, though? Methane? Marsh gas. <laughs> Marsh gas. <laughs> I was just going to say the month of Halloween. Yeah, it's fun over. Month. I love it. I'm really excited for the next movie we're doing. Yeah. Super what, excited. What movie is that? So Shano? we have already touched Terrifier 1 and 2. We touched them? Yes. Like but, sexually? Yes. Mm -hmm. But did you want to know the real origin of Art the Clown? Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to find it out when we review all Hollows Eve. Does he always get that deep on his teases? I don't know. That was a deep tease. But so deep. It is interesting because like everybody knows about Terrifiers, and I've never seen All Hollows Eve. So kind of seeing that Arthur Clown existed prior yeah. is new for me. It was. It was for me because we normally go in order, but we're going a little backwards here. But that's okay. Get it, over it. it Sometimes we change up on it. It does have the same director. It does have a different person playing Art the Clown. Yes. So it's it's you know, it is what it is. We'll 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 touch on that next week. Because this week we're the final podcast signing off, and we will see you next week where we figure out why they had to throw an alien in the middle of the movie. That's fucking really fair, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, tune in to www.thefinalpodcast.com. New episodes every week. We are getting super excited for this month. And I will say, just want to throw it out there because it is coming up. Final Friday will probably be back soon. Give it a month or so. We'll be back. But yeah, definitely give us a subscribe on YouTube. And we'll see you next week. Apple Podcasts, also Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. We'll be there. Yeah, stream the... <laughs> And also, <laughs> if you want to listen to good music, just good indie tunes, you can listen to the duo, the indie darlings, like Mike said, the Black Keys. They're on Spotify. They're also going to be guests Apple on music. next week's episode. Yes, yes. <laughs> Gold. <laughs>